Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes, and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. Today, we're talking about how do you train your horse to accept clippers, whether you're going to clip their, around their legs or around, you know, under the chin or the ears or the bridle path, or if you're going to do a body clip. How do you get them started? Um, the reason we're talking about this is on a previous video, I, well, okay, so... I shared on my private training group a video of me working with my horse and getting him used to water using clicker training or positive reinforcement. And some people asked, do you do the same kind of training with clippers or trimmers? And I said, yes, and that's a great idea. So I don't have a horse that's like scared of clippers, but I had some that I've never clipped before and I would expect them to be a little bit reluctant about letting me, you know, do that. Uh, so I, I videoed a little bit, or a friend of mine videoed those sessions, and I'm going to show those for you today. Um, an interesting thing is, generally speaking, I don't think this is going to be a super uh, popular topic, uh, just because, you know, either, like, for me, I don't clip my horses at all. I don't clip their bridle path, I don't clip their ears, definitely don't clip their muzzle, which, if you are clipping their muzzle, you shouldn't, because that's how they find and feel so many things. You shouldn't do that. But I don't, I don't clip my horses at all, and so it was something I've never even needed to do, but you could see if your horse needs a procedure um, and you're not going to totally sedate them, being able to clip them is a good idea. And just getting our horses used to different things is always a good idea. Now, if you're watching live today, uh, I'm going to have another talk after this one ends at about 4.30 talking about rider position for the gated horse. And we'll go into that. So if you are watching and you want to stay for the next one, we'll do that because this month I'm doing lots of traveling and so I thought I'd do two today since tomorrow I will be traveling again. So if you have any questions, go ahead and post them below. Um, here, really quickly, Shanna asks, what are my favorite clippers for body clipping? That's such a great question. I have no idea. I don't clip. I, uh, up until this video... Like, this is crazy. I don't think I've ever even held a pair of equine clippers. I have never clipped my horse's bridle paths. So I don't have a good recommendation. Um, Linda says hello from Minnesota. Cheryl has a good point. She says some heavily feathered horses who get mud fever scratches need that clipped. Yeah, so even if they're not, even if they don't have heavy feathers, if they just have more hair in the back of their leg, they can get scratches or mud fever and need that trimmed so that it can dry out and heal. And so that's a good reason, even if you don't, for showing purposes, ever uh, clip their bridle path or their ears. Um, some horses stay fuzzier and you may want to clip them uh, just to look a little bit neater. So I'm going to go ahead and play this next clip. It's about eight minutes long and me working with my mare Serenity. Now she's been taught to touch things. She is not head shy at all. Um, but you can see that she, she actually in this, the session is broken up into two sessions in one day. The first session she actually left she showed it was too much what I was asking her to do, which it doesn't matter whether using clippers or anything, a plastic bag, a tarp, a saddle, going to look at something new. If your horse, and this is a good reason to do with no halter, because they'll show you if you're doing too much, if what you're asking is more than they can handle. She actually walked away, and that was when I knew, okay, we, we need to stop here. So basically what you see is I ask her to, to offer that interest again, and then we ended there, and then we started again, and she did well. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and let me know uh, as you're watching if you have any questions and I'll pause and answer it. So this is just a massager that I got off of Amazon. Oh, also, yes. Yeah, so right now I didn't own any clippers. I didn't know my friend Hannah who's videoing has clippers. So I bought this massager cheaply off of Amazon because it vibrates. And so it's a very similar feel to clippers. And so I'm going to start with it off. So it's not vibrating at all. Girl. And she already knows to touch stuff with her nose, so like that, and she's not really particularly scared of stuff, so that was easy. And like I can touch there, um, but I mean it does, it is not a loud that vibrate, but it definitely, uh, they can hear it and like are reluctant to touch it. But the idea is that it simulates using clippers, but I don't own clippers. There she touched it herself. So I'm trying to get her to touch it herself. So put it here and have her move into the contact. 
right there. See? Okay, so one thing I do want to mention. Um, somebody just made a comment, which I love comments, so thank you. So Mia says that she has a horse that gets so thick by February, he will start sweating in a stall, so she has to clip him. She said, but you can't get near his neck. So it's really briefly, I want to touch on that. What if you have a horse who you can't get near their neck and or part of their body? Don't start there. Start wherever it's easiest and do with the clippers off to start with. Make it as easy as possible and have them come to you, not you go to them. It's very important. You know, she touched it with her throat latch. Girl. There, she touched it with her cheek. That's great. So I'm just holding it still and letting her touch into it. So you don't want to chase your horse. Right? You don't want to chase your horse with whatever you're using, whether it's an actual clippers or a massager or anything, a plastic bag. You, if you're going to do the target training and use the clicker, you want there to be no pressure. So. Good girl. So she's okay. So this is no pressure. So good girl. So she's really moving to touch it now. And uh, she's totally loose. She could leave. Her buddies are all right here. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna put it on its gentlest setting. There we go. So first I'll ask her to nose target. You can see this is just kind of moving, vibrating a little bit there. Good girl. So we'll start here, back. There, she pushed into it. That was really nice. <laughs> Close up, you can. <laughs> I'm not going to chase her with it. Good girl. And you obviously probably want to do this on both sides, but I'm just starting on the easier side. Um, I do want to talk about something. So we've got a couple comments about horses. Um, so like Diana says, she has one that hates clippers. So I'm obviously showing you a horse that doesn't hate clippers. What if you have a horse that hates it and the instant they hear it or see it, uh, they want to run away. So what you need to do is start farther. Obviously, I started very close to Serenity and you can see she's not terrified of it. But start farther away if you have a horse that has an issue. Literally start on the other side of the round pen, pick up the, clicker, the clippers. If your horse is, is calm, click, put the clippers down, walk up to your horse, give them a treat. And again, this is for horses that hate it. So start with it off. And don't surprise them by being too close when you turn it on. Uh, I hope that makes sense. I got this. And there she's, you know, pushing into it nicely. Good job. Girl. And especially since I'm using, I could have a clicker in my hand. This is big enough that I'm just using my tongue click. Good girl. Right there, she's showing some stress. By being stiff and having her head up, she's showing a little bit of stress and reluctance to touch it. So I'd probably have it too close to her pole. Good job. So wait she could have totally stepped away if she wanted to there. Her nose and not her purple. She may be a little bit sore there too. You can do it. So, like, that's too much for her. She was like, that's too much. And that's why we do it this way so she can walk away if she wants. <laughs> you come here. Going to stop there. Good job. Yep. So I forgot to show, like, this mare is not not head shy at all. So it's not a matter of her being head shy, it's just with the clippers. So now we actually have clippers. So now they're not on. I'm going to have her touch it. There you go. And she, like, almost touched it with her nose. When a horse is first 
checking out something new, you don't have to wait for them to actually put their nose on it for you to click. There, she actually put her nose on it. So we have a couple of questions here that I want to answer really quickly. Uh, they're good questions. So Karen asks, what are my thoughts on shaving whiskers? So I believe in a couple different um, show organizations that they've now banned it, banned shaving the whiskers because even though it can present a very nice clean profile for the horse, they've realized that whiskers are invaluable to a horse for checking out their surroundings, not just using their eyes and their sense of smell and hearing, but use the whiskers to feel around them, feel their world. And so in some cases, it's now being considered abuse to clip the whiskers since unlike clipping the legs or the ears or where they have too much of a coat, it's always, as far as I've ever heard, for aesthetic reasons that you would clip the whiskers. So like I get clipping under the chin, a little bit if it's long and hairy, uh, but I would never clip whiskers. So that's a really good question and a little controversial in some circles. Uh, let's see. Shanna says that she has a um, sh I, she has Cushing's ponies. So they uh, often have a very thick coat, and she says she uh, they, she shaves the co the ponies' neck each summer so that they don't get too hot. She said her horse is fantastic. She stands quietly without halter or lead rope, which is wonderful. Uh, Diana says she has one that hates clippers. So again, start farther away. Cheryl asks a really good, you know, follow-up question. She said, do you have to start at the neck? Can you start at the shoulder? You can start at the shoulder. You can start 10 feet away, literally. If your horse is terrified of you standing next to them with the clippers, start 20 feet away and click and give a treat. Start that association with them off. Uh, so basically the idea is we don't want her getting so stressed that she walks away or gets worried about it. So we, the more worried the horse is, the farther away you start. Because if, if you have to follow them around because they're scared of it, you're doing it wrong. Uh, and then Sue has a really good question. So let's see if what I missed here. She says, maybe I missed something. You're waiting until she shows some release to give her a treat. Like turning her head to you or head drop. Or alternatively, that's what you do when you give a treat versus not. Okay, great. So I'm not actually looking for a release. I'm asking her to do what's called target. So I'm asking her to touch part of her body to the object, either the massager or in this case, you know, the clippers. So when she touches her nose to it, I click. When she touches her neck to it, I click. So it's sometimes hard to see with that angle, but there's times when I'm holding it by her neck and I am literally not touching her. I wait for her to move toward the clippers. And you're going to see that a little clearer in this video because she's going to move part of her neck toward the clippers and touch it. And so all I'm looking for her to get that click and the treat is for her to touch it with her body part, her nose at the beginning. So in this uh, here, in the beginning, you're going to see that I want her to touch her nose to it, and then I'm going to ask her to touch more of her neck and her body. Same thing if it was her leg, I would start at the top of the leg. I wouldn't ask her to bring her leg to it, but uh, if she moves away, then that's my that's me doing it wrong or incorrectly. And again, these are not on. Girl. See if she can move toward it and touch. Girl, she's like, I know how to push into this. That was a good example of it. So I'm holding it up. I'm not touching it. like 10 minutes later in the first session. Can you come over here? So there she she moved her neck toward the clippers. I'm not touching her. There she touched it with her neck. That's what I'm clicking, not for head down. That was her cheek touching it. Or most of our cheek. So now we'll go ahead and turn it on. There we go. So there she put her nose close to it. These are very loud louder clippers. Than the other one. So we're going to see. If, it, if she doesn't do well, then I'll go back to the easier one. Because the goal is not to make it too hard. There she touched it with her nose. And you see I move it back kind of behind me. Again. Not touching her with it at all. I'm holding it near her neck. She or shift uncomfortable. She's not quite comfortable with touching with her neck yet, but she touched it with her nose. Girl. 
not touching her with it. I'm waiting for her to move toward me. There we go. And then she feels you it, can, but it doesn't hurt her. You can you be know, shoulder. Closer to the base of her neck rather than... A, that's good. Rather than the more sensitive part, which is the top. Right away. She's getting it right now. She's like, okay, that doesn't hurt. Good. And your goal isn't to try to get this gun in a single day, but to just get them like, they're like, oh, okay, I don't mind that. Good girl. And then you'd build longer duration. That's nice. Good girl. Good girl. And obviously her head's going up, so you'd want to work at getting her to drop her head. I targeting one more. I know. It's like, look at my neck. But our goal is not to actually clip anything today. <laughs> Good, girl. Good girl. That was very nice. So there was an excellent, we ended the session there, didn't do any more that day, because she was willing to touch the more sensitive part of her neck to the clippers, and I clicked and treated, and then we stopped there. And you obviously can continue, want to be able to touch their legs, their belly. Uh, but for her, definitely the top of her, her neck, her pole, was a very sensitive area for her. Um, Sue mentions that, she says, thank you, I'm not hearing the clicker. So you're hearing me do a tongue click. I'm going like that. So let me go back briefly so you guys, if when you go back and watch it, you'll hear me do the tongue click. So... Right there. That's a tongue click. Because uh, I was switching back and forth, having something in my hand that I always was holding and feeding grain, I could have had a clicker in my hand. I decided not to. Um, and Because I, I want people to know you can use a clicker and you can use a tongue click. Shanna says that she started her pony at a distance, just like I kind of mentioned. She said, I just did normal chores with the clipper in my hand. She was able to use the sound and comfortable with it quickly at a distance. It helped make the transition to clipping go smoothly. Yeah, that's another way, is take the clippers with you. If your horse is terrified, then leave them off for a little while. And once they start to get used to it, then carry it around with it on. But don't chase them around. Don't make the focus about the clippers or about you doing stuff to the horse. So again, this isn't something that everybody struggles with or even everybody needs to use. You've read a few different reasons why you might need to use clippers, other than just for aesthetics. Um, and I just wanted to show again how positive reinforcement can be used to help a horse get used to this idea of different things. It could be a plastic bag. It could be a tarp. It could be a saddle. It could be dewormer. So obviously we may not all clip our horses, but a lot of us use dewormer. What if your horse would willingly bring their head to the worming tube and let you put it in their mouth without having to fight them too much. You can do that and other husbandry things using positive reinforcement, clicker training. Uh, that's something that people do. Uh, you can teach horses to push their head into their eye into your hand. What if you need to treat their eye and they're just like pulling their head away? You can teach them to literally press their eye into your hand, allowing you to treat that. And it's much better to do that kind of training before you have a situation. You can do the same thing with needles. Now, there are some extreme cases of horses that struggle with needles from past experiences, but I mean, I had an Arabian, he did not like to be poked. And so what I did is at first I got just a, I just, you know, poke his skin and then give him a treat. Poke his skin, give him a treat. And then I get a little toothpick, poke his skin, give him a treat. Then practice thumping him and give a treat. And it doesn't have to be all in one day. And do this, ideally, don't hold them there with a halter and force them to take it. Do this and make it a positive thing so that they come to you. Then start pinching them and pinch a little bit longer. And if they stand there, give a treat. And there's, there's a lot of ways and good podcasts and information about doing this. But you can, pretty much anything you can think of, if your horse is cinchy, which if they're cinchy, you need to check for physical issues. But if it's not physical, it's something they learn to do, you can start to habituate or use clicker training to get them used to something like that as well after you've checked for pain. Okay. Uh, Sandy says, thank you. This, that is a great idea. Good. I hope some of that has helped. 
and giving you some ideas on how you can use positive reinforcement or just get your horses used to things without it being traumatic, without your horse having to be in a round pen and tied up or attached to you with a halter and lead rope. And I hope you stick around for the next talk, which is just going to be talking about rider position for the gated horse, because there's a lot of misunderstanding with leaning back, leaning forward, what's correct, what's not, things like that. So thank you guys so much for watching. I always love, we have such good questions, and I love talking to everybody. Hope you guys have a great ride and a great week.